Crunchy Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. So being consistent in Fortnite is easily the number one most critical aspect to becoming a top tier player. With the increasing skill ceiling, the many methods of practice, and the increasing number of competitive players, the difficulty of staying consistent in Fortnite has increased rapidly. In today's video, we're going to be going over a bunch of tips that you should be using to become a more consistent player in stack competitive lobbies. And while this video is mostly, you know, meant for competitive, be sure to stick around guys no matter who you are, because these tips can really help you out as well, even if you're a casual player. Speaking of competitive gameplay, if you've ever wanted to learn what the pros do to get so good, then you should be looking no further than ProGuys.com. On our website, we've got pro coaches who can help you with everything that you'll need to reach the top level in Fortnite. So be sure to check it out ASAP. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, bunch your crunch army, it's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is it, y'all? It's that bunch your crunch, and let's get this going. The first aspect of being consistent in Fortnite is figuring out when and how you're going to play aggressive. Too many players think that being consistent in Fortnite requires you just to play passive and just get placement points. But really guys, it's the opposite. At the highest level of competitive kills are pretty much completely necessary and you usually won't have the loot, you know, materials or healing items you need while going into end game unless you have a certain level of aggression. So the level of aggression that you want to play at really depends on a number of factors, right? But a few that I want you guys to keep in mind include your loot, materials, the amount of healing items you're carrying and your position on the map obviously you know if the zone is super far or you don't have enough healing items don't have enough materials or anything like that your goal should be to fix your situation before you fight otherwise it really just depends on your overall strategy and whether you want to emphasize kills or go for a placement based route whether that is like either way having a set aggression strategy and figuring out you know when you're willing to fight it's going to benefit you guys tremendously when it comes to consistency in competitive lobbies okay When it comes to getting consistent placement points in competitive, like one of the most critical aspects is your mid game rotations, guys. Simply put, you know, you could have the perfectly sculpted early game, like everything can be amazing, but if you don't know how to rotate and actually make it into the end game, then placement points are not going to be your strong suit. So, one massive aspect of mid game rotations is rotating to the dead side of zone. Like, this is the concept a lot more players have been picking up on lately when it comes to competitive, and it's really worth knowing. Okay, so essentially like dead side rotations are just rotations toward the side of zone players they're not on. This typically means the side that is closest to the ocean. So on the dead side, you're going to be contested by less players, which means less fighting, less wasted materials, potentially better loot if you find some unlooted spots, and easier rotations to top it all off. So practicing your dead side rotation simply comes down to learning the patterns of how players typically rotate and working around them. Most players are usually going to white line to zone, which basically means running straight to zone on the white line of their minimap to get there really, really fast. So if a zone pulls all the way towards, say, south towards Misty Meadows, then the north side of this zone is going to be super congested. Meanwhile, almost nobody is rotating to or around the Misty area or even south of that. So overall, you know, it'll just make your game so much easier to learn the dead side, okay? Now, Storm Surge definitely isn't the type of issue most of you guys are dealing with at the moment, but when it comes to the high level of competitive, you're going to be much better off in the long run if you can learn it early and not have to stress over your Storm Surge strategy if you ever play in a big tournament lobby. If you don't know already, all right, Storm Surge is basically a mechanic epic introduced to Fortnite to counter players sitting in boxes all game. Obviously, if there are 80 players in the seventh zone, then that just results in a complete disaster of lag, confusion, and pain. Storm Surge has three phases, which, you know, go off during the third, fifth, and seventh zones. Each time Storm Surge is gonna pop, you're gonna see a Storm Surge warning appear a zone before, so you know if your total damage is high enough. So if the third zone Storm Surge is possible, then you're gonna know during the second zone. 
So basically, like if you haven't dealt enough damage to other players, then Storm Surge hits you. If you ever get a warning for Storm Surge and you're below the needed number, you're going to get some tax quick. Storm Surge will deactivate when the player count hits an acceptable level, which includes the following, all right? Third zone, 70 players. Fifth zone, 50 players. Seventh zone, 30 players. If Storm Surge is hitting a player, then there's going to be a giant beam that shoots them from above every five seconds, which deals a constant damage of 25 per hit and once they get above the threshold it's gonna stop on its own so what this means is that you'll need to develop a strategy for storm surge if you ever plan on running into it obviously i can't make you know the exact plan for you here since you know we all have different strategies but a few options you might want to consider for your storm surge strategy includes these all right basing up on elevation to shoot at surrounding players carrying a sniper you know scoped ar or another long range item for tags taking one or two early to mid game fights Overall guys, Storm Surge can be a real killer in stack games, but these tips should help you guys a lot in avoiding it. So another big aspect when it comes to competitive is your ability to save on materials. Raise your hand guys, like if you had an amazing game, then like out of nowhere, you have zero materials. <laughs> That's probably a lot of us, right? So conserving your materials is absolutely critical and competitive. Learning to save your materials in the long run, yo, it's gonna help you guys improve dramatically. So there are a few methods that really, really work tremendously for material conservation. So be sure to implement these into your strategy, all right? Using low material tarps, tunnels, and end game, so strong basing up on or near sources of materials like you know rocks trees etc taking excess loot from other players harpoon fishing rod strat getting impact frags to refresh materials so if you start using those four strategies or at least two or three of them your materials should stay in so much better shape and in turn your mid and end game should go much smoother All right, finally, my friends, the last thing that we're gonna be covering is your overall strategy. So having a consistent strategy going into every single competitive game would be the main thing that separates you from the average player. Like if you follow the same loot route, similar rotations, and play out each game in a consistent way, you're gonna be able to refine your exact strategy and in turn, play more consistent. So what we recommend doing is this, guys, VOD reviewing on a consistent basis and having a zone-by-zone -zone layout of what exactly you're gonna be doing. And that way, you know what you're doing in every game, and you you could just adjust and tweak your strategy to perform better and better as time goes on. All right, so speaking of vibe reviewing, guys, don't forget that if you ever need some help or advice, you can head on over to ProGuys.com and talk to one of our pro coaches who can help you, you know, spot weak points in your gameplay and improve at a faster rate. And they can even help you find a drop spot, like develop a strategy, improve your fighting skill, and so much more. So be sure to check it out, all right? With a mixture of vibe reviews, your own personal experience and general practice, you should definitely be able to refine your strategy and you're going to see much more consistency in your gameplay as a result. All right, guys, so to recap, we first talked about the importance of having a consistent aggression level, then how you can rotate to the dead side of zone to deal with less congestion and make it through mid game more consistently. And after that, we talked about the importance of a storm surge plan and, you know, how the actual mechanics of it work, how you can conserve your materials to survive longer in game. And finally, how you can set up and develop your own strategy to play more consistent in tournaments, arena, or even normal matches. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. I'm back. Bunch of crunch arms. Me. it's been fun man but unfortunately we're gonna have to stop right here let us know down in the comments what you guys thought about the video along with what you guys want to see next all right and don't forget to check out proguys.com which will be down in the description and while you're at it feel free to join our community discord server and subreddit where we have an amazing community guys i promise you it's really really dope all right guys keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going